My research led me to places I never expected to go, revealing surprising discoveries that seemed unrelated at first, but which turned out to be crucially connected, as you'll see. I found a code, a pattern in nature that's been embedded in arts and icons throughout the centuries. I believe this code holds the key to a new source of clean, sustainable energy that could completely revolutionize the way all people live. Some of the scientists at this symposium showed me how the Taurus has been encoded by different cultures for millennia. Apparently, ancient cultures had embedded this code in the most enduring forms then possible, in stories, in icons, in alphabets, and buildings. Here we are at one of the world's oldest sacred sites, the Osirian Temple at Abydos, Egypt. Very little writing is found in the Osirian Temple. However, there is one very significant piece of information in that temple. It is a very faint but clear and precise drawing. It's not etched into the rock, it's not carved, it's burnt into the atomic structure of the rock in some extraordinary way. Nassim has decoded the Osirian symbol in three dimensions. Since our world is not two-dimensional, it makes sense that codes relaying information about our world also wouldn't be limited to flat designs. His three-dimensional version of the Osirian symbol starts with the vector equilibrium, a perfectly balanced force field with 12 equal energy lines radiating out. They stabilize its center like the 12 spokes of a wheel. The primary pattern of balanced energy flow around this structure is the torus. Here we expand to the next larger scale with a total of 64 pyramids called tetrahedra. If we then put spheres in representing the toroidal energy field surrounding each of the pyramids, and then we drop away the pyramids, we end up with a matrix that is, amazingly, an exact overlay for the Osirian icon, a three-dimensional model of the same pattern that was burned into the rock wall of the Egyptian temple thousands of years ago. Now we travel across continents, from Egypt to China, where the same geometry appears at another sacred site built in 1420. Then you go to the Forbidden City, where the sun gods reside, and where you find at the entrance the Fu Dogs, the guardians of the knowledge. They guard the knowledge under their paw. The same geometry of 64 energy units is encoded again. I started wondering, is it just a coincidence that the exact same design appears in significant places on two different continents? But then Nassim showed me that this geometry of 64 is encoded time and again in cultures across the centuries and from all over the world. The Hebrew Kabbalistic Tree of Life creates the same structure we just saw with the vector equilibrium again embedded at every level. The ancient Chinese system of wisdom called the I Ching is based on 64 hexagrams, symbols with six lines in a set, some continuous, some broken. These can be put together as the six edges of a tetrahedron and together would form the 64 tetrahedron crystal. This same pattern shows up in modern scientific research. The double helix has an alphabet of 64 codons that are used to encode our human DNA. Out of all of the evidence for the existence of UFOs, one extraordinary phenomenon continues to astonish and inspire me. The appearance throughout the world of so-called crop circles. 
These elaborate designs appear mysteriously swirled into crops of grain in such a way that the stalks are bent over, yet remain alive. More than 5,000 of these patterns have appeared in over 30 countries, most of them in England. The media has led many people, including me at first, to write these crop patterns off as hoaxes, the nighttime work of a few pranksters. Of course, there have been faked versions, but those made by human hands are crude compared to the vast majority of these elegant creations. Could hoaxers have created all 5,000 of these patterns? Could a few people with ropes and boards have created something as complex and beautiful as this one, made in the dead of night in a driving rain and leaving no footprints in the soil? The electromagnetic field over the area where the crop's been laid down to create the image is often electrostatically charged. Some of these areas are littered with strange magnetic particles. One of the most amazing crop designs is not a circle, but a rectangle that seems to be a direct response to a message sent out into space in 1974. The message was a radio signal depicting our planet's location in our solar system and Earth's people in hopes that it might be received and interpreted by an extraterrestrial intelligence. 27 years later, in 2001, this crop design appeared in England, along with what could be a self-portrait of the sender. This message matches the format of the NASA signal and describes a different solar system from ours, a picture of the sender, non-human DNA, and a microwave antenna they apparently used to communicate, rather than the radio antenna that we used. The antenna symbol had appeared a year earlier in exactly the same field, right next to a working radio wave antenna, like the one NASA used to send out the original signal. NASA continues to officially deny extraterrestrial contact of any kind. And yet, year after year, these spectacular creations appear. So what might these remarkable designs mean? Here are some two-dimensional versions that seem to be revealing the Taurus in 3D. Here is the vector equilibrium. And the related pattern of 64 that we saw encoded in the arts of so many ancient cultures. When I saw the coherence between the crop circles and the ancient encodings, I thought regardless of whoever created them and wherever they're from, there must be an important purpose to these designs. They're so coherent. I've come to believe that the pattern of the torus and the vector equilibrium, especially in the form of the 64 tetrahedron crystal, is showing us how energy works in the universe.
so that we can learn to align with it. Trombley built a dynamo, a direct current generator that accessed electrical power right out of the air. We were trying to demonstrate that by mimicking the magnetic field of a planet and rotating this device, we could actually create a dynamo that would work. And in fact, it did work, and it does work. So when we contemplate nature, when we contemplate Jupiter, or we contemplate a dynamo like the Earth rotating in space, we're basically talking about a magnet which is rotating in space. And the lines of flux of the magnet are pouring down and through in this toroidal pattern of the magnetic field. It's also expanding and contracting. It's breathing. It's taking in the energy of space, literally, and transforming it. Right here in this toroid, we have enough energy to transform the entire Earth. And that's not just a theoretical statement. It's literally true. To contemplate the implications of this means that every single place on Earth suddenly has power. Every single person on Earth suddenly has power. We have universal abundance. Inventor John Bedini began working with Tesla's theories of radiant energy decades ago and has produced an assortment of battery charging devices that generate more energy than it takes to run them. He announced that he was going to start offering them at low cost. Soon after that, he was attacked in his lab and warned not to produce the devices. For his own safety, he had to let go of marketing free energy. These are all devices from labs I personally visited. Now. Now the quality of this footage is obviously poor and I'm not expecting this to convince you. My point is that being there with these inventors accompanied by experts and seeing these new energy devices in operation convinced me that the technology is real. Canadian John Hutchison not only created some free energy batteries, but also used Tesla's theories to counter gravity, to make objects float. This could revolutionize the field of propulsion. His lab was raided and equipment was taken by police and government officials in 1978, 1989, and again in 2000. One of the scientists we were going to interview for this film was Dr. Eugene Malov, an engineer from MIT and Harvard, and editor of Infinite Energy magazine, which covers both theoretical and technological developments in the new energy field. Dr. Malov was mysteriously beaten to death in 2004. If the new energy technologies were to be set free worldwide, uh, the change would be profound. It would uh, affect everybody. It would be uh, applicable everywhere. Th these technologies are absolutely the, the most important thing that's happened in the history of the world.